water to us is, is the very sacred. To say that it represents Mother Earth, that life. Having water, as everybody knows, is you know part of the elements of life. You know, if you don't have water, you're not going to survive. When I was a little boy up here, I thought this river down here was all our water. But then I come to find out years later that it's really not. The Tule River Tribe has water running through the middle of its reservation that they can reach out and touch, but they cannot utilize because it has not been quantified legally it has had not the federal government imprimatur that it is theirs. We have to ask for permission to use the most basic component of life, which is water. The Tule River Indian Reservation was granted to the people of the Tule River Tribe. There's approximately over 2,000 enrolled tribal members with about 900 living here on the reservation. For the tribe not to be able to take our allotted water that we need to operate our reservation, I believe is a travesty. In 1922, there was a water agreement. It was the tribe's water, but they weren't asked to come into the room. The federal government, in concert with the local community at that time, decided to divvy up the tribe's water while they were in the other room. The end result of that negotiation is everybody had rights to the water except for the tribe, whose water it really was. When the local community found out that they could take some of that irrigable water, they took it, not because they should, but just like Manifest Destiny, it was because they could. No one was there to protect the Native Americans. I would say that the tribe has been uh, victimized because of the lack of water. I know when I grew up on the, as a kid here on the reservation, uh, we didn't have any uh, pipe water to any of the homes. The water shortages uh, mainly occur during the summer months and certain households will run out of water just because of the low flows in the river and some people don't go to work or school because they're unable to bathe. You can't really prepare any meals that require water at home. When's the last time you turned on a faucet and didn't expect water to come out? That cannot be said for the Tui River Tribe. And water, if you do not have water, you do not have life. If you don't have life, you do not have economic development. It is essential. The agreement that uh, we just negotiated here about three years ago would provide the tribe adequate water for probably uh, 100 years and keep up with the growth of the tribe. Senator Feinstein, in her water settlement discussions with us, stipulated that she would sponsor the legislation if we did not use the new water for a casino operation. The uh, limitations on the water uh, means that the tribe uh, isn't going to be able to adequately serve its uh, membership, which grows you know, year to year. It really uh, <laughs> kind of pisses you off, you know. The United States has a trust responsibility to tribes um, to help them develop their resources, especially here on the reservation. There should be no restrictions in, in any bill proposed on behalf of the tribe or introduced on behalf of the tribe. If there is any, any kind of restriction, it's going to limit the growth of the tribe and the health and welfare of that tribe. The the final chapter has not been written on the water settlement because there's always been a vast canyon between the promises of the federal government to Native Americans and their actual outcomes. It's coming down to what is the federal government prepared in order to right this wrong for the almost 100 years theft of the tribe's water. Without the water, we can't survive. You know, without that source, without that river, how our life flows, the river flows. 
from one end to the other end, until it goes back into Mother Earth, until it's reborn again. You know, so water we should always hold very highly. Because you know, if we lose our water and that source of life, we won't be here.